Uh, tonight's topic is nutrition and glutathione. Let me share my slide. Share screen. Okay. <laughs> <Always>. <laughs> huh. The box, the dreaded box. That, that little box always keep coming up. Is that okay? Yep, perfect. Doc. Let's see first whether it's moving or not. Okay. So nutrition and glutathione, eating for optimum health. Okay, let's start with why we need sufficient glutathione. Glutathione, as we all know, is a critical um, <clears throat> molecule for the body to keep us alive, to keep us healthy. But mainly, it helps protect our cells from damage due to oxidative stress, to mercury and other toxic metals, from the harm of alcohol and, and uh, organic pollutants, and also protects our mitochondria uh, and is vital to energy production. So, you know, in fact, in fact, it has plays a major role in our protecting our mitochondria. Certain levels of glutathione within the cells and mitochondria are highly associated with health and longevity, and its deficiency is associated with many chronic diseases and loss of function with aging. It is indispensable, uh, dis uh, indispensable master antioxidant, anti-inflammatory agent, and detoxifier, indispensable immune booster and modulator, very important signaling molecule, plus hundreds of other important functions to keep the body healthy and functioning optimally. So when we talk about uh, nutrition glutathione, I will focus on uh, how uh, our nutrition can help maintain a healthy glutathione levels or even boost glutathione levels. Um, but not just that, but also to boost activity of the glutathione system. Okay, because glutathione does not work alone. It works with uh, the system of enzymes uh, and, and nutrition also play an important role uh, in, in the other aspects of the system, including the enzymes. Okay. So let's look at glutathione in the food that we eat. There are some glutathione rich foods and uh, spinach, avocados, asparagus, and okra are some of the richest dietary sources. Also turmeric, cabbage, walnut, almonds, watermelon, oranges, grapefruit, green tea, and, uh, and a long list. However, dietary glutathione is poorly absorbed. That we have to put in uh, in bold um, because when we talk about glutathione rich foods, then then we expect that we we can boost our own glutathione levels by eating these foods. But unfortunately, glutathione is poorly absorbed. Furthermore, cooking and storage conditions can decrease the amount of glutathione found in the food. However, despite having a lower impact on increasing glutathione levels, glutathione-rich foods may help decrease oxidative stress in the oral cavity and the gut. Okay, so it's not totally useless, right? Because uh, even though it's not that not not absorbed, but in 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 the mouth and in the intestines, it already starts playing a role. <laughs> okay, for example. A study showed that people who consumed the most glutathione-rich foods had a lower risk of developing mouth cancer. So even in the mouth, while you're chewing, right, the glutathione there is already protecting your mouth. That's how wonderful glutathione is. And then there are foods which are rich in sulfur compounds and sulfur-containing amino acids, which are cysteine and methionine. And this can increase glutathione in our body indirectly by increasing its synthesis, all right? So the glutathione in the food is not absorbed, but it plays a role in the mouth and in the gut. 
but the sulfur compounds and the sulfur amino acids uh, in the food, then uh, if they are uh, absorbed, then will boost the production of glutathione. So in that way, indirectly, will increase uh, the glutathione level. So these include cruciferous veggies, like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kale, watercress, mustard greens, and alliums, which are garlic, shallots, onions. You can um, add whatever is in the family. They all um, are rich in sulfur. Also, the meats, eggs, fish, poultry, and, and uh, dairy milk, uh, and uh, whey protein, right, which is uh, uh, also processed from 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 milk. Yes, these are also rich in uh, either sulfur compounds or the uh, amino acid cysteine and uh, methionine. Again, cooking and storage conditions not only can decrease the amount of glutathione found in food, also can denature these sulfur compounds and amino acids. Turmeric. Extract. Okay, the medicinal properties of turmeric are likely linked to its main active component, curcumin. Right? There, there are many other active components of turmeric, and these are collectively called the curcuminoids. But the most, the most powerful of them is curcumin itself. And numerous studies have shown that turmeric extract and curcumin have the ability to increase glutathione levels and improve the activity of glutathione enzymes. Right, so when we, we say turmeric extract, uh, it includes all the other active ingredients. When we say curcumin, we just refer to curcumin as the most powerful of the active ingredients. But to experience an increase in glutathione levels, you would need to take turmeric extract and not the spice, because it would be impossible to consume enough of the turmeric spice to get enough curcumin for this purpose. We also need uh, the B vitamins, um, vitamin B9 or folate, vitamin B6, and vitamin B12 are called methylation nutrients. Um, and these are essential to glutathione production uh, because um, in, in the system that involves the nutrients, these vitamin Bs are involved in the methylation cycle, and, and is, which is linked to what is called the transferoric transsulfuration pathway. Now, what is the transsulfuration pathway? This is a very important pathway for the production of cysteine containing peptides and the synthesis of glutathione. So you know, glutathione is a tripeptide that contains cysteine as the middle uh, amino acid. But there are other peptides that also contain cysteine um, and proteins that contain cysteine. So whenever protein uh, cysteine is involved, then this pathway is involved. This pathway allows the conversion of methionine into cysteine, thus making the latter, not the latter, sorry, the latter, a non-essential amino acid. So you know, um, the body does not produce cysteine, so it should be an essential amino acid. But if we have methionine, then the body can convert through this pathway, can convert methionine to cysteine. So that makes cysteine non-essential or partially essential. Right, because it is conditional. If we have methionine, then it is not essential. If we don't have methionine, then it is essential. Essential means you have to get it from outside. Cellular methylation and antioxidant metabolism are linked by the transfiguration, transsulfuration pathway, which converts the methionine system, as mentioned above, um, in hydrogen sulfide. Right, so, you no know, when with those familiar with with the sulfur uh, sulfur containing uh, solutions, and those of you who, who have handled uh, IV glutathione, you know you can smell the sulfur. It's almost like smell like hydrogen sulfide, <laughs> very mild form of hydrogen sulfide. And the top sources of B vitamins include meat, especially liver, 
seafood, including fish, and poultry, eggs, dairy products, legumes, leafy greens, seeds, and fortified foods such as breakfast cereal. Right, they added this added vitamin B and nutritional yeast. You need vitamin C. Vitamin C supplements have been shown to increase glutathione levels in white blood cells in healthy adults. Okay, um, the line number number three tells that a uh, study of showed that 500 milligrams of vitamin C supplements per day increase glutathione uh, in red blood cells by 47 percent. Right, line number two is so in white blood cells by 18 percent. Vitamin C helps increase glutathione levels by attacking free radicals first, thereby sparing glutathione. Okay, so you know all of these antioxidants can attack the free radicals, but when you have plenty of vitamin C, then the simple jobs can be done by vitamin C. Uh, first, vitamin C is a weak antioxidant, but it's, it's abundant there. Uh, then you can um, spare the glutathione to do its more important work. Okay, likewise, if you have sufficient alpha lipoic acid, coenzyme Q10, and vitamin E, you will also spare glutathione, right? So indirectly, you will boost glutathione levels because uh, it is not being consumed because these other uh, network antioxidants uh, are, are doing their job properly. The, the free radicals are being mocked up by, by uh, these other antioxidants. So glutathione is spared, so its levels remain high. We also need vitamin D. Research has shown that higher vitamin D levels correlate to higher glutathione levels, and correcting vitamin D deficiency can, in itself, increase glutathione levels. And it has been shown that uh, vitamin D uh, boosts or upregulates the glutamate cysteine ligase. Um, this is the enzyme that powers the first step of the uh, synthesis of uh, glutathione, right? The first part is glutamic acid is uh, combined with cysteine by this enzyme glutamate cysteine ligase. Vitamin D also um, upregulates or boosts the function of glutathione reductase, right? And glutathione reductase role is to recycle glutathione from the oxidized uh, form back to the active form. Okay, and overall also, vitamin D boosts or upregulates the uh, glutathione synthesis. So we see definitely by boosting the, the, the first part of the, of the synthesis, then it should increase the glutathione synthesis overall. Um, but it also increases glutathione levels by increasing the recycling. Uh, of the tire from the oxidized to the active form. What about selenium? Selenium is an essential mineral and a glutathione cofactor. That is, it is needed for glutathione activity, especially uh, the glutathione peroxidases. And these are the enzymes um, that work together with glutathione to neutralize um, peroxides, uh, this, this uh, unstable molecules. Increasing intake of selenium may help maintain or increase the body's supply of glutathione. One study investigated the effects of selenium supplements in 45 adults with chronic kidney disease for three months and found that all of their glutathione peroxidase levels increased significantly. That is, they were able to increase significantly the glutathione activity, which means that they are able to, to uh, start healing or at least stop further damage. So we should eat a balanced diet with selenium-rich foods to ensure adequate levels of selenium. And some of the best sources of selenium are beef, chicken, fish, organ meats, cottage cheese, brown rice, and Brazil nuts. Melatonin increases glutathione. Melatonin is, is the sleep hormone. Melatonin increases glutathione levels in the tissues of our liver, brain, and muscles. Melatonin can be naturally found in tart cherries, hummus, bananas, nuts, teas, chamomile or peppermint, and fish, cod, salmon, 
tuna or halibut, all right? Maybe some of you didn't know this, that this hormone melatonin also is by the body, but, you know, like many hormones, as we age, it's drastically reduced. But there's also, you can also get from food, such as those mentioned. Melatonin helps regulate sleep, is a powerful antioxidant, and has anti-cancer properties. Fortunately, melatonin supplements are also available and very cheap. Okay, so earlier on, I started out by saying that uh, we need sufficient glutathione because of this uh, all the important function that it does. Just, just to, to remind that, indeed, we need plenty of glutathione. Okay, so what happens to our glutathione as we age? So when we are young, the production of our glutathione is generally sufficient, even though some children suffer from having low levels of glutathione, some of them because of genetic problem, some of them because of uh, chronic diseases. Um, but generally, by after age 20, then the production uh, goes down by 10 to 15% every decade, um, which exposes us to a state of oxidative stress, um, then uh, less ability to identify and then uh, reduced uh, immune function, um, and then uh, reduced anti-inflammatory uh, capacity, all because this depends on a uh, glutathione. And then many, all the functions of glutathione will be affected when the levels go down. Uh, and, and unless we do something, then we are going to be exposed to many, many diseases because more than 100 diseases or health disorders have been studied and found to be associated with having low glutathione levels. So how to increase glutathione? Right, we need to reiterate, remember that glutathione from food or supplements, oral supplements, are poorly absorbed, although there are some supplement forms that claim to have good absorption. So from the diet, as mentioned earlier on, the thion rich foods may help the gut, and sulfur rich foods may help boost the thion production a little because, of course, then, then, um, um, cysteine, especially, um, uh, if, if absorbed, then can help boost the thion, uh, in the cells. So, the way to best increase our good thion is by taking oral good thion precursors which provide a stable form of um, the natural amino acid l cysteine, which is the rate-limiting ingredient, meaning how much cysteine you have will determine how much production of the thion can occur. <coughs> uh, for the intracellular manufacture of the thion. So this is the most convenient and proven method to boost the thion long-term. What about IV glutathione? This is inconvenient and expensive has a short half-life, three hours, but useful in hospital and emergency situation. What is the re relative efficacy in boosting glutathione levels comparing whey protein, right? Whey protein is uh, has um, methionine and cysteine, uh, and as a supplement, it's also one of the ways to boost glutathione. So if whey protein increases glutathione by a factor of one, then um, studies have shown that NAC is eight times more efficient than whey protein. At the same time, studies have also shown that ribocene right, or ribocysteine, which is another form of stable cysteine, is three times more efficient than NAC, which means ribocene is 24 times more efficient than whey protein in boosting the time levels. Okay, so what is ribosine? Ribosine is a combination of two natural uh, molecules. One is D-ribose, a natural sugar, and L-cysteine, a natural amino acid. So the full name of this um, com combination is D-ribose L-cysteine, shortened to ribocysteine, and patented by Max as ribosine. So it is a patent nutrient, whereby the stable cysteine then uh, is kept uh, intact in the gut, is not denatured, and then is absorbed 
and then is made available for the cells to make with the dayam. And the wonder of this molecule ribosine is that the ribose, which is used to stabilize the cysteine, itself is useful because it is uh, used to make ATP, among many other things. And ATP is an energy-carrying molecule, and it is needed in the synthesis of glutathione. So that may explain why, but, um, sorry, ribosine is 300% better than NAC, which before ribosine was the... Um, was the glutathione precursor that everyone depended on. Okay, this explains why ribosine is the most efficient glutathione precursor, 300% more efficient than NAC, because you can see on your right side, right, every step, so this is the first step that is also boosted by vitamin D, remember? The, the uh, attachment of cysteine to glutamic acid. Okay. Right. So this step requires ATP. And the next step, which is um, <clears throat> adding glycine right, to, to the combination of glutamic acid and cysteine. And that also requires ATP. So ribosine provides both the cysteine, which is the rate-limiting uh, precursor, and the ribose, which will then increase the ATP to power this synthesis. Okay. Right, so it's for, for a long time, uh, when I was wondering why, what makes ribosine 300% more efficient than NAC until it clicked to me, it must be the ATP. <laughs> so we have two ribosine-based supplements. One is MAX1, which is 100% ribosine. All right. Uh, one advantage of, of taking precursors as opposed to taking the glutathione, oral glutathione, even if the oral glutathione is absorbable, right? You have you, you, um, you know, special uh, formulation that they say is absorbed. Even if we take oral glutathione that is absorbed, then the, oral, the glutathione remains extracellular. You must remember this. Okay. Whereas glutathione is needed mostly intracellularly. So glutathione that's produced inside the cell is more valuable to the body than glutathione that's outside the cell because you took glutathione uh, orally. In fact, right, the system is such that the glutathione produced in the cell, right, there are mechanisms easily right, to bring out of the cell if required outside. But the reverse is not so easy. If you have plenty of glutathione outside the cell and you want to get this glutathione inside the cell, it is not that simple. In fact, most of uh, mostly what happens is the glutathione has to be broken down to its component and the components brought in and then has to be resynthesized inside the cell. Okay, so that's something you that's something you should know that why taking or the precursors is better than taking the, the uh, oral glutathione, even if the oral glutathione is absorbed. Okay, next we have Salgevity, which is um, ribosine with 12 other ingredients with many other health benefits that makes Salgevity an anti-aging powerhouse. Okay, thank you very much.